when it comes to Italian designer, it's hard to pick the best one. But one designer that truly deserves this title is Franco Scaglione. Not only Scaglione's cars are considered as some of the most beautiful cars of all time, but also his creations change the car design forever. A master of aerodynamics, Scalione is responsible for such cars as the Alfa Romeo Bath series, Tipo Treta Tre Stradale, and Abarth Record. So, hello guys, and welcome back to another designer profile video. And here is the profile of Franco Scalione. Franco Vittorio Scalione was born in Firenze on September 26, 1916. He showed a talent for drawing and a passion for aeroplanes and aerodynamics since an early age. After finishing high school, Franco tried to enter into the Italian Air Force, but he wasn't accepted, so he decided to study for aerodynamics at the Firenze University. After finishing this course in 1937, Scalione wanted to get a second degree on aeronautic engineering at the Bologna University, but the outbreak of the Second World War interrupted the studies and saw Franco being drafted for the army in 1938. In May 1940, Scalione was uh, serving at the 31st Sappers Battalion on the Yugoslav front. In September 1941, Franco was sent to the North African front, but his ship was torpedoed and sunk by a British submarine. Many lives were lost, but thankfully Scalione was saved by an Italian torpedo boat after spending seven hours in water. He was sent to Libya, when he was taken prisoner by the British, and later was sent to India, when he spent five years in a concentration camp. He finally returned to Italy on December 26, 1946, and started living in Bologna. Franco started sending letters to the major coach builders and design houses all the time, but most of them didn't even respond to him. So without a job, Scalione started designing clothes in 1948, but his passion about cars continued to grow, and he continued designing cars on his spare time. Scalione started visiting car shows when he would meet people like Pininfarina, Nuccio Bertone, Enzo Ferrari, and other coach builders. And he would show them his designs. In 1950, now with more financial security, Franco decided to move to Torino in order to be closer to the auto industry. He started again to seek job on different coach builders. But again, most of them didn't even respond to him. But Battista Pininfarina decided to offer him a job. But both men failed to reach an, on an agreement. The two main reasons were that Franco wanted to be independent. And also, he didn't like the fact that Pininfarina didn't allow the names of the designers to be associated with the house creations. But in 1951, Nuccio Bertone invited Franco to work for him and Bertone decided to comply with Franco's request. In 1951 and 1952, Franco Scalione would design his first cars for Carrozzeria Balbo, when he designed two Lanchas, based on the Aurelia B50 and B53 Coupé. Also for Carrozzeria Balbo, Scalione designed the Fiat 1400 Balbo in 1952. In 1952, Franco also designed the Fiat 1100 Utileta Frasca for Carrozzeria Ansaloni. But in 1952 would come the first car that was completely designed by Scalione, the Abarth 1500 Coupé Biposto. This car was presented at the Torino Motor Show and was based on a Fiat 1400, which was reworked by Abarth. 
The spaceship look with a triple headlight and the arc wheels left everyone speechless. After the Torino Motor Show, the car was bought as a design study by uh, James Nays, which was the president of Packard. Later on, a car journalist bought the uh, Biposto and used it for 20 years. In the late 70s, the car was placed on a barn, until 2003, when the car was found and restored. In 1953 was the Ferrari 166mm53 Abarth. This car was pure scalione and showed the genius style of the new designer. The world was amazed by these creations, but in 1953 would come one of the most legendary cars of all time, the Alfa Romeo Berlinetta Aerodinamica Technica, or BAT, how the car is commonly known. This car was a design study, therefore the name Berlinetta Aerodynamica Technica. Based on Alfa Romeo 1900, the car was just way ahead of its time, especially when you consider the fact that the car was built without a wind tunnel. The low drag efficiency combined with a lightweight body helps the car to reach a top speed of 200 km per hour, even though the straightforward 2 liter engine produced 100 horsepower. Also in 1953 came two cars, which were built for Stanley H. Arnold, an American businessman who wanted to sell rebadied British cars in America. The first car was the Arnold Bristol, which was based on a 2-liter Bristol, and came as a competition Barchetta, a road going one, and as a coupe. The design was quite similar with a Bart Biposto. A total of 1800 Arnolds were built where most of them were Barquettas. But while Bristol made it into a limited production, this wasn't the case for the Arnold Aston. Based, based on the Aston Martin DB4 to the Ford, the car had a similar design with the Arnold Bristol. Only seven of these cars were built, since Aston Martin stopped selling chassis to them. But all these cars were very small production cars or just concept studies, which never made it into production. The first big hit would come in 1954, when Scalione and Bertone presented the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Juliet Sprint. This was a perfect car for Bertone, since his biggest goal was to build cars for other car makers. Also in 1954 came the Alfa Romeo Bat 7, the second generation of BAT now was even more extreme, something that lowered the drag efficiency from 0.23 to 0.19. These are still amazing numbers even for today's standards. In 1955 came three Alfa Romeo prototypes, the Alfa Romeo 1900 Perla, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Spider prototype and the final version of BAT project, the BAT 9. This time the car was less extreme, since this was how the car would look like if it made it into production. But as we know, the car was never produced. In 1956 came only two cars, both Abarths. The, the first was the Abarth 750. Again, a similar design was used, the flat nose and the rear fins. Also, like the Arnold cars, the 750 Bertone had pop-up headlights something quite special for the time. The second car was the Abarth Record, a streamliner which, like the name suggests, was built to break records. In 1957, Scalione designed the Fiat Stanguellini 1200, which looks like another design study. While the Stanguellini 1200 was a quite extreme car, the Jaguar XK150, which was presented after it, looked like a normal car. But definitely the best car of 1957 was the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint Speciale. The Sprint Speciale can, e can easily be considered as one of the most beautiful cars of all time. Even though the design was presented in 1957, the car only entered production in 1959, after two more prototypes were presented. In 1958 would come another big hit for Scalione, the NSU Sport, Sp Sport Prince Coupé which was based on the legendary NSU Prince. Also another Alfa Romeo was presented. This time Alfa Romeo collaborated with Abarth in order to bring the Alfa Romeo Abarth 1000. 
In typical Abarth style, the car was extremely lightweight, weighing in just 640 kilos. And like the name suggests, the car had a 1000cc engine, which produced 85 horsepower. This was enough power for this car. In 1959, Franco designed the Maserati 350 GT Bertone and the Oscar 1500, both one-offs. These would be the last cars that he would design for Bertone, since in 1959 he decided to cut ties with Nucho. One of the reasons that this partnership ended was a magazine article which praised the Italian designer. But the main reason was the fact that Bertone wanted to design cars that one day could enter production, while Scalione was more about concepts and one-offs, which were more art than cars. In the 60s, Scalione became independent and started designing cars for a number of different car makers and coach builders. He would design the Porsche 356B Abarth GTL in 1960, and after that he was mainly inactive, until 1962. In 1962, Franco designed the beautiful, beautiful ATS 2500 GT Berlinetta and in 1963 the Lamborghini 350 GTD prototype and the Stangolini Guzzi Colibri. The 350 GTV was a very beautiful car and in my opinion is a better looking car than the 350 GT. But Ferruccio wasn't satisfied with this design, so he asked Carrozzeria Touring to redesign the car, but also to keep some of the design features of the Scalione design. From 1963 to 1967 Franco designed a number of different one-offs and limited production cars, like the Intermechanica Griffith and Torino, Titania Velto GTT, and the Prince Scaline 1900 Sprint. But after four quiet years, Franco Scalione designed one of the most beautiful cars in the world, the Alfa Romeo Tipo 33 Stradale. The Tipo 33 Stradale was built on the chassis of the Tipo 33 race car which Alfa Romeo gave away after they decided to retire the racing cars. The chassis were given to different coach builders, and each one of them built a version of the Tipo 33. The Scalione Tipo 33 was so beautiful, and still is, it's hard to find another car as beautiful as this. The power came from a 2 liter V8, with 230 horsepower and 150 pound foot of torque. Thanks to the lightweight body, the Stradale could reach a top speed of 260 km per hour and, to reach one, and could reach 100 in 5.5 seconds. Originally, Alfa wanted to build 50 Tipo 33, but only 18 were made. The two prototypes were built by Auto Delta and the remaining ones by Carrozzeria Marazzi. When the Tipo 33 was introduced for the first time, it was one of the most expensive cars of the time, with a price tag of 9,750,000 lire, more expensive than Miura and way more expensive than the 365 coupe. It's hard to say how much a Tipo 33 would sell today, since no car has gone up for action. Plus, the Tipo 33 Stradale is a very sicked after car. But I'm going to make an entire video about the story of the Alfa Romeo Tipo 33. The Tipo 33 truly proved the talent of Scalione, but sadly this would be one of his last creation. After the 33, Scalione would only design 5 cars, all for Intermechanica. In 1975, Scalione started working for Fiat for an aerodynamic bus, something quite similar with the Alfa Romeo bus project but due to health issues, he left the project after one year. In the 80s, Scalione tried to open his design house, but due to lung cancer, he decided to retire. Scalione lived the rest of his life in Suvereto until June 16, 1993, when he passed away.
Scaglione would always be remembered as one of the greatest uh, car designers of all time, a true artist, which never worked for money or for fame. He only wanted to build beautiful and aerodynamic cars.